The term fall guy in the stunt world is the guy that takes the hits. It's the guy that takes the fall, the guy that falls off the horse, the guy that falls off the bike, the guy that falls down the stairs. The stunt person, the fall guy. Colt Seavers is a stunt man who gets caught up trying to get back together with his ex slash love of his life. I'm the director. You're a stunt guy. We need to keep it super fresh. Cool. Do you want to make out? Nope. Because I don't either. It's not what I'm into right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jody and Colt had this love struck fling. He's desperate to win Jody's love. Save Jody's film. You get the love of your life back. You need the core. <laughs> The Fall Guy is also a reflection of my experience as a stunt performer. The fact that he's a stunt performer <laughs> making a film about the stunt community felt like the perfect fit. David is so chill about this, but there's like cranes and explosions and cars flying through the air. Well, this movie must have been dear to your heart being that it's about stunt people. Yes, super close to me. Um, having been a stunt performer for 20 plus years, uh, I was really excited at the opportunity to shine a light on these incredible artisans that actually get to bring these crazy sequences to life, the things that we go to the theater for, you know, exactly. to really pop, yeah, popcorn movies. I'm so glad that stuntmen are starting to get recognized for uh, their contributions to Hollywood. I mean, you know, since, since it began, there have been people jumping on horses and uh, and all of that. Yeah, it, you know, it is really the legacy of um, cinema began with the with stunts and action. And so Harold Lloyd, Buster Keaton, you know, um, Charlie Chaplin, there's great stunt performers and great directors in their own right at the beginning of film and um, even before there was sound. So it's good to finally start to see some recognition. As I watched the film, I was thinking, I you know, I knew Glenn Larson uh, Oh. Know, pretty well and I think he would have loved this movie and 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 how Colt Seavers changed from the series to this because it, it is so deeper and and much more um how can I say it he's he's facing kind of the end of his rope <laughs> yeah you know I when I look back we I was a huge fan of the original and all of like Glenn Larson shows like you know I'm a child of the 80s so there's part of that the, the prolific canon of his work in my DNA as I tell stories. Um, but I look at the original show and there there's a lot that we connect on, you know? There's just, there's a big beating heart in the middle of this thing and there's a surrogate family of people around Colt Seavers and then there's just this love for his job yeah. and this unusual set of skills that he has that he can use to apply to the real dangers in the world and so, um, I'm glad, I think, I, I hope we could have made Glenn proud and I hope Lee's proud and um, I'm excited. And and I think the cookies that were throughout the film also for people like us that that love the original series with, with Lee Majors um, was just great to see. It made you feel like you're part of all this. That's great. Um, again, because it's so dear to me as a stunt performer and like one of the shows that lit the fuse for me wanting to even be in that world for so long, I wanted to make sure we were um, paying homage to the original. Yeah, working with Emily and Ryan, I mean, that must have been a sheer joy. It was a, it's such an honor, you know, and again, it's such a pinch me moment that they are having a well-deserved recognized moment where they're, you know, both having Academy noms this year. And, um, but they're at the top of their career, they're at the top of their skill, and to watch them every day on set, bring these characters to life, it was just um, breathtaking. Right is missing. He has fallen in with some shady people. We'll kill. Call the cops. We can't call the cops. Mm. Why not? The studio will know that I am way over budget. They will pull the plug on this. You know that. Please go and find him. Why me? You're a stunt man, for God's sake. No one's gonna notice whether you're here or not. No offense. I mean. So I'm taking... Hannah, let me start with you because uh, your character is uh, Gail. Is this based on someone that actually you know? Uh, well, ish. <laughs> I mean, ish. 
the 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 broader strokes are actually based on uh, a producer that I've worked with in London who's a male mm. but the look was very much our very own beloved Kelly McCormick on on mm. Full Guy um and I don't she didn't quite realize how much I was kind of secret squirrel looking at her from behind <laughs> a hedge here and there just trying to get everything going the layers and the jackets and the like the sneakers and all the rest of it but um I suddenly realized that I was drifting quite a lot into looking like slash <laughs> at one point <laughs> She but was I, very rock and roll. <laughs> I loved it. And then it started going back the other way where <laughs> Kelly was like, uh, can we get me a pair of those glasses that Hannah wears as Gail, please? <laughs> Winston, I mean, this is a love letter to stuntmen, but it's also really a love letter to what goes on behind the scenes uh, on a shoot. And uh, uh, was that attractive to you when you when you looked at the script and said, boy, I, I got to play this role? Absolutely. There were a lot of things that were attractive. Um, Ryan Gosling being one of those things that's <laughs> attractive. Uh, I've been a fan of his since Young Hercules on Fox and watching his career grow has always been something uh, really appealing to me. So getting the opportunity to work, work with him and uh, everyone else has been incredible. And then um, it being about the stunt community that also unfolded. It's one of those things where the experience also taught us what the movie was about. Yeah. So I, I believe that was also, we, we realized that as we went along because this movie is about the stunt community, mm -hmm. but how much it matters, we all got to understand it experientially. I got to see it by just watching Chris O'Hara day to day, uh, take on all that responsibility with grace and poise. And he was the calmest person on set in a set that's <laughs> always moving and things exploding and people could break their backs or their necks. And he's always calm, making sure everyone goes home safe. Stephanie, we, 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 we've got a wrap, but I have to just ask you, I mean, Alma is such a great character. Um, what was it like getting into her skin? I mean, assistants rule the world. And that is, uh, they rule, they are the, the turtle shell. I've never used this metaphor in my life. They are the turtle <laughs> shell of Hollywood. I don't know. Um, but they know a lot of secrets and they are definitely very unsung heroes. I like that journey I went on. Yeah, it <laughs> the was turtle visual. shell, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, all the way down. Um, but yeah, assistants, they truly are the backbone of this industry. And so much of the people we admire started off as an assistant to somebody. So it's always such a gift as an actor when you get to sort of like, you know, give a little love letter or like be mm -hmm. like, oh, this this character is secretly for like every PA that I'm looking at on set right now. Mm -hmm. And just like a little, you know, nugget into into that universe. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much for your time. I, I love all of you. And uh, uh, what a great film. Congratulations. Well, not equally. <laughs> but but <laughs> no, we just a little bit more. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Not equally, yeah, Tony you know? T. It's we okay. Know, yeah, it's we know okay. who that was directed at. <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> I loved that. I loved that. I loved that. I'll never forget it. happy to be the first actor to say I did none of my own stunts, but it was important that I do some of the stunts for authenticity in the film. The whole opening sequence leads up to them dropping me 12 stories off of a building. Then I got dragged across the Sydney Harbor Bridge. Ryan has an incredible aptitude for action. That being said, we did use four doubles. We created the best of the best stunt team. All the way down to Logan Holiday, who's our driving double. Logan is brilliant at rolling, driving, jumping. That adrenaline rush I used to get racing, I now get that doing stunts. Anytime there's fighting, martial arts, that's just an eat. He just really blew me away with his skill level. We've got opportunities to really do big, big stuff. All the fire burns, car hits, anything parkour like, that's Ben Jenkins. Ben Jenkins is just a super talented, all around stunt guy. 
I've got to do some intense, crazy stunts. Stunts! Troy Brown did this amazing 150-foot high fall at the end. His dad is a legend in the stunt industry, so Troy's been doing falls since he was five years old. This is a big chapter in my life. People are going big on this show, breaking records, and I'm just glad to join the party. I'm not the hero, I'm just the double. Not today, you're not. Colton Jody's relationship is complicated. She's eccentric and she's as messy as the rest of us. You wanna make out or? Nope, I mean, yes. Wow, she's smart, talented, maybe a touch sadistic, but she makes it fun. I'm the director. You're a stunt guy. We need to keep it super professional. She started it. The last thing she needs is this ex-boyfriend showing up. What happened to your face? You look terrible. You look amazing. Holt is willing to do anything he can to get her back. Ultimately, the chemistry that they have is going to override any desire to try and keep things perfect. Hey, Colt, thanks so much for the stunt chat. Stunt chats, I love them anytime. When people meet on set, it's called the showman's, but what they have is much more than that. Want to go to a beach somewhere? Drink a spicy margarita. Make some bad decisions. Yes. My gosh, as I live and breathe, there's Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling. How are you guys Hi. doing? Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. What a what a terrifically fun movie this is. And and Ryan playing the reluctant hero, it, it's you do such a great job in this. Well, I did it reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, was she twisting your arm during all of this? Uh, the, the... Emily? Was I twisting you? The, no, I was twisting her arm to do it. No, I mean, I needed no, no for twists. A long time. No twists needed. But you are the And I was like, what about this one? Hero. You're the director and you get to boss me around and set, <laughs> set me, on, me fire. on fire. She was like, I'm in. That was it. That was it. It was music to my ears. Mm -hmm. I was done. I was done. Emily, Emily I, I know that you've had a, a great love for, for people that do stunts throughout your career, but. Does this give you a super appreciation for those people that risk their lives for the movies? I mean, they've always been just the most incredible group of people working on a film set and um, their contribution to cinema and to what gives us that effervescent rush and wonder when you watch a movie is down to them, like risking life and limb for to make actors look really cool, but also to give audiences that injection of excitement into their veins. And they've, they're so skilled, they're so talented, they're selfless, they're humble. And I'm so thrilled to be a part of this love letter to what they do. It's true. Uh, Ryan, um, what do you think audiences are gonna take away from watching The Fall Guy? Well, hopefully, well, first of all, it's a love letter to the stunt community, as, as Emily was saying. You know, I've, I've played, this is my third time playing a, a stunt uh, person, but it's my first time that you really get to sort of delve into uh, what, 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 what their life is like and just really put the spotlight on them. You know, they, they sort of, they do all the stuff that makes heroes in films and yet they're, they are uncredited and they sort of hide in the shadows. So to sort of have the stuntman become the hero is, has been really just an honor to be a part of shining a light on that community. So I'm excited for the audience to see that. I mean, they've created some of the most iconic sequences in films. So many yeah. of the moments that we love uh, are, are them, and yet we don't know their names. So that's that's really exciting. But more than anything, it's also a love letter to to making movies and to going to see the movies. And uh, um, we really tried to make something that reflected how much we love and making films and how lucky we feel to get to do it and also how much we love going to the films and being in an audience so um we were just it was so it, everything aligned in this movie to be able to to marry the two and make something that felt like both a way to honor how much we love what we do and also just how much we love going to the movies what a, what a great statement about stunt people uh, and emily i have to tell you uh, in my playlist I have your version of Wild Mountain Time. I play it all the time. You do not. I do. My ringtone. You do not, Wild Tony. Mountain is my ringtone. I do, my old friend. I do. God bless you. I think you and my mom have seen that movie, but I I appreciate it. That's oh, well, you were great in it. You're great in everything, both of you. God bless you. Can I get that on iTunes, Tony? <laughs> I, I hope not. Where did I you get that, Tony? On iTunes. 
I had to find it. Literally. Oh, you had to find it. <laughs> Tony. Love you both, and you guys have a yeah. great day. Hey. Thank, thank you. you. What happened to your face? You look terrible. You look amazing. You fall down, you get right back up. How far would you go for the one that you love? I'll buy you a drink when this is over. Engage your core. Want to go to a beach somewhere? Drink a spicy margarita! Make some bad decisions! Yes! film franchise was all about the apes, man. Apes! Together! Strong! One of the longest running movie franchises in Hollywood history. Ladies and gentlemen, the planet of the apes! We feel very privileged to be involved in a franchise which can speak to a huge audience. The new Planet of the Apes movie looks awesome. Rarely do I ever walk out of the theater in absolute amazement. Ooh. Okay, here we go. Myself as a fan, I'm very, very thrilled at the opportunity to contribute to this great legacy of these movies. All right, here we go. Pictures up. Whereas the last three movies were about Caesar and his struggle. Here, our movie, you cut three, four hundred years after. And you see what has become of the apes. What's become of his legacy. Oh, Caesar! What's become of the humans and the world. Wonderful. It's such a cool continuation of this world. We find a new protagonist called Noah. For the humans, life as we knew it has kind of gone, and the apes hunt down the humans. But Noah sees something special in my character. Why do they hunt this human? He is smarter than most. We've worked really hard to achieve a much bigger scale. I mean, it's jaw-dropping. And what Wes has set up here is a fascinating idea. You are familiar with the concept of evolution? Ultimately, our movie is really about can apes and humans live together? You would choose a human over an ape. Together, you will die. No! No, together, strong. The Planet of the Apes franchise, it lasts and really transcends time. The legacy of these movies is very important to me. Any film after Caesar's journey has to be equally profound. And Wes all achieved that with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. What Andy Serkis did was just amazing. Oh, Caesar! He brought a digital character to life with Kingdom. We get to contribute to this great legacy. We wanted to give people this immersive experience into a world we've never seen before. Wes did something new, and I was really excited to pass on the baton. The fans of the previous trilogy will appreciate that we took this leap forward to do our own thing, but still honor what came before. Wes's vision is extraordinary. It really does feel like the ultimate Planet of the Apes movie. Bend for your king. Never. Yeah! Long before your elders, there was a time when humans and apes lived side by side. Impossible as that may seem. When I was asked, what would you do with the next Planet of the Apes movie? 
That was where the kind of big idea hit me that you jump hundreds of years after the death of Caesar. Caesar. Who is he? Not is, was. We follow a new character, Noah. He's going to be exposed to the truth about humans, about what came before. Humans can never be trusted. And a new threat and a very powerful ape. This is our time. This is my kingdom. Yes! It's so incredibly epic, the landscapes. They did an amazing job of making the world feel very torn apart and beautiful. It's incredibly cool. This whole world is really expansive. The elders did not tell us everything. I love that notion of our world transform into lost temple in the jungle. We worked really hard to achieve a much bigger spectacle. It is a big giant adventure, which you want to experience in as big a screen as possible. Thanks for joining us for Screen Chatter. If you'd like to follow us online, visit us at ScreenChatter.com. You can check out our many interviews, and you could also check out my reviews. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, we're available on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Again, thanks for joining us. I'm Tony Toscano, and we'll see you next week right here for another Screen Chatter. Mm -hmm.